Nothing in this podcast or on our website should be construed as medical advice. Consult your healthcare provider for your individual nutritional and medical needs. The information presented is based on our research and is strictly that of the author and not necessarily those of any professional group or other individual. Hi, I'm Sue Becker from Bread Beckers. Welcome to Sue's Healthy Minutes. I'm so excited you've joined me today, and I hope this episode encourages you and allows you to find the answers you have been praying for, for the health of you and your family. Today on Sue's Healthy Minutes, I want to replay for you episode 66, my interview with Sarah Valentine. It is perhaps the episode I refer to the most when speaking to people I meet. Why? Because I meet so many people who believe they can't eat bread or wheat, who have been told they are gluten sensitive, gluten intolerant, or even celiac. And like Sarah Valentine, they too have adverse reactions, some quite severe, to commercially processed bread or in their minds, wheat and gluten. And like Sarah, they have been told that it is the wheat and gluten itself that is causing these reactions and not making the connection of the processing done to commercially processed wheat and bread and the stripping away of the nutritious bran and germ portions. And like Sarah, While having all the symptoms of celiac disease, they are possibly not truly celiac at all. We have now met hundreds of people like Sarah, who after years of going gluten-free, have no adverse reactions at all to bread made from freshly milled flour, even wheat. And they are not only able to simply tolerate real bread made from freshly milled flour, but they also begin to actually thrive on real bread and see many health issues resolved. And in their words, they feel the best they have felt in years. So today, I hope this testimony from Sarah will bring you hope that good health and healing is possible. And I also hope that you will encourage others who are struggling to listen to Sarah's story. Today on Sue's Healthy Minutes, you will have the pleasure of hearing another amazing It's the Bread story. For many weeks now, you've been hearing these stories. They just keep coming in, and I am always encouraged when the Lord connects me with yet another person who shares their story with me. I hope you have enjoyed hearing these testimonies as much as I have of better health from real bread, God's perfect provision. My guest today is Sarah Valentine. Sarah and her husband live in Starkville, Mississippi, where he is in veterinarian school, and Sarah is in her fourth year of dental school. Sarah has a powerful testimony to share with you today. But I do want to give a short medical disclaimer here, as I do not want anyone to think that we are advocating disregarding a medical diagnosis. I am well aware that there is a medical condition known as celiac disease. It is genetic and usually diagnosed at a young age. Someone with true genetic celiac disease will never be able to eat wheat or any grain with gliadin, a gluten-forming amino acid, even if it is freshly milled, unless, of course, the Lord heals them. However, that being said, I do know that today, gluten sensitivities and even celiac disease are often being diagnosed, even misdiagnosed, based on symptoms And gluten just seems to be the easy culprit to blame. As you listen to Sarah's story today, ask God to give you wisdom. And I know that he will. Now, it's time for me to let you hear Sarah's story. I usually begin by asking my guests to tell how they first heard about Breadbeckers. But today, 
I want Sarah to begin with her backstory, as she calls it. And as she says, her journey is long, but I want her to share it all with you today. And even as she calls it, the TMI parts. So without further ado, I want to welcome my guest, Sarah Valentine. Sarah, thank you so much for taking the time out of your busy life to share your story on Sue's Healthy Minutes. I knew when I read your email that yours was a story to tell. So I want you to feel free to tell it all and to take as much time as you need. Thank you so much, Miss Sue, for having me. Um, I, I genuinely can't believe I'm talking to you. I'm just so happy to be here and I'm so thankful for the bread. So I just appreciate all that you do. Um, Yes, my story is a little bit long, but I'll try to keep it in a nutshell while still telling the important parts. Yes. So I am 27 years old now, but I have been gluten-free since I was 19. My whole life, I struggled with chronic constipation and dizziness and headaches, and I had a lot of brain fog and a lot of other unpleasant symptoms. And actually, when I was 11 years old, I was so sick, my parents had to take me to the emergency room, and we had no idea what was going on. Um, So they then took me to a pediatric GI specialist um, who put me on a laxative and told me I would need to take that for the rest of my life which was really sad to hear when you're 12 years old. (laughs) Yeah. Well, I think you said, too, the reason you ended up in the emergency room was you had not gone to the bathroom in nearly two weeks. Yeah. I I don't even remember that part of my life. It was a very hazy part. Um, So when I was 16, the doctor they had been taking me to actually retired. Um, But I kept on with that laxative. I took it twice a day, like he told me to, until I was 19 years old. And little did I know that taking that every single day was making me chronically dehydrated. Um, So that was uh, contributing to, you know, part of my health that wasn't very good. Um, And in high school, I was late to school nearly every day. It seemed like I could not get out of the bed. I was always exhausted. I was bloated. I had these dark circles under my eyes and I dealt with anxiety. Mm. And I felt like looking back now, I feel like no one talks about this stuff. So I I just hope that this story can help people because I hope that people don't have to go through what I went through for so long. But anyway, I I didn't talk about it with anybody because I I thought maybe everybody feels this way. I didn't know any different. Yeah. Years later, I came to realize I was like living in a fog, you know? Yeah. Um, So I I thought everybody felt that way. And I would tell myself, you need to kind of like toughen up, you know, push through. So my, I got to college, my freshman year of college, I had joined all these clubs. I was taking a ton of classes. Uh, I was playing soccer for my university um, in that spring season. And I was also, I don't know if I added this, but I was working three part-time jobs, which sounds crazy. Oh my gosh. I was working a lot and um, which, which was great. I loved all of it. And naturally you would think like, oh, she's going to be very tired. But I was very, very, very tired. I was exhausted all the time. Um, My health, I felt like, was declining. And I, once again, like, could not get out of bed. So one morning, I finally confessed to my mom that something had to be wrong with me. Like, I felt miserable. And so she started researching. My mom is such a researcher. And she found a clinic that had this um, nurse practitioner. And then they also had a a doctor of osteopathic medicine who focused on holistic health. And at my first appointment, they read my blood work out to me. And I don't remember everything because I, again, was kind of in a haze. But they were reading it out to me and I was deficient in just about everything. I was vitamin deficient. I was dehydrated. I was on the line for hypothyroidism. I was so iron deficient to the point that she asked me if I had been having seizures. Oh my goodness. Um, So it was just a lot to hear at one time. Me and my mom were both kind of, you know, shocked. So they told me that I was probably, I probably had celiac disease and that I was allergic to dairy as well. And they recommended I cut out for six weeks and see how I felt. Um, They also put me on a laundry list of vitamins and supplements, which was good. (laughs) Um, They gave me these like huge, 
they were, they're called beef liver iron supplements. And I actually still take them to this day. Um, but yeah, I had to take six of those a day. Oh my goodness. Yes. So it was, it was a laundry list of stuff. Um, but, but after, so I quit eating gluten and dairy and after just two weeks, I was a completely different human. Like, I felt like I could finally see for the first time. And I don't know if that makes sense to anybody, but if you've had brain brain fog before, maybe you will understand, but it just felt like I could finally like see clearly. Yeah. Yes. And I told my mom, I said, I had no idea that people felt this good all the time, like all the time. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I was ecstatic. Um but I, I never took a blood test for celiac because after not eating it for a few weeks, I felt 100% better and my dark circles under my eyes went away and I didn't have to take naps all the time and my anxiety went away. I just felt so much better. So we all just assumed I had celiac. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I had all the symptoms. And so why bother, you know, to take a, a blood test? You have to eat gluten again for a few months. And I just wasn't willing to do yeah. that. Like, I don't want to go back feeling that way. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It sounded like a hassle. And I was like, no, I'm okay. So I just learned how to eat gluten free and dairy free. And it was very hard. I will say that it, it was not easy, especially being in college. Cause you know, all your friends are going out to eat and you're in college. So you eat junk food. And so I, I learned how to read labels, um, and find hidden gluten and common foods. Like, like ice, some ice creams have wheat and soy sauce has wheat. And then I had to learn how to order at restaurants and stuff. Cause that was a whole, it was just a whole new world of being really strict. And I remember at Bible study one night, uh, my, my Bible study teacher had made this casserole dish. It was poppy seed chicken, which is like, that was like my favorite food at the time. And she didn't put crackers on it because she said, you know, it's gluten free. I didn't put crackers. So I ate it and it actually had cream of chicken soup in it, which has wheat. And I was so sick for days. Oh my goodness. I was so sick. Um, I would get headaches and stomach cramps and I'd have to take naps and my brain fog would come back. So I was very, very strict. Yeah. Um, I didn't cheat when it came to gluten. My family knew that. My friends knew that. Um, on holidays, I would sometimes let myself have a little bit of dairy, but I always paid for that with like bloating and stomach problems and breakouts and stuff. Um, so that's kind of been the last eight years of my life. <laughs> And you're so young. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's okay. I will say I'm very grateful for the doctors who helped me, you know, figure out it was gluten or whatever, you know, whatever it was. But I, I, I'm grateful at the time that I quit eating what I was eating because I, I wouldn't be where I am today, you right. know, without, without that turnaround. Right. You got your life back. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So, um, okay. So in your email, you said fast forward eight years. Um, I think yeah. you told me that it was actually your brother. So tell us about that, how you, how you came to hear about bread Beckers and, and that part of the story. Yes. Okay. So, um, this past February, January, like just a couple of few months ago, yeah. um, my brother was looking for a way he has, um, his oldest son was dealing with chronic constipation and he's five years old. He's so young. Oh my goodness. And yeah. so, yeah, so he was, you know, he and his wife were searching for a way to help him, um, you know, figure that out. And somebody told him about you. They said, have you heard of bread Beckers? And my brother said, no, I don't know what that is. Um, so he started listening to your podcast and then they decided to go all in. They, they actually only live a couple of hours from your store. So they drove to your store and they got, you know, their, their grain mill and the wheat and the yeast, all the stuff. And they started making their bread at home. And within days, my nephew's constipation went away. They were just baffled. You know, we hear this so much and it's so sad. Five years old. And that's what I tell people. Mm -hmm. You know, when I was growing up. Constipation was an old person's thing. You know, I, you know, you didn't hear of it. And now we hear it all the time. Two year old, four year old, you know, five year old. Yeah. And 
doctors sometimes they just say, well, there's nothing you can really do. Or like with you, take a laxative the rest of your life daily. Gosh, if they only knew the bread, <laughs> practically ground whole grains could fix it. So um, I'm yeah, wow. That's amazing to hear that. So I didn't mean to interrupt, but go ahead. No, no. My heart I, breaks so when I hear people. And I've had moms cry to me and go, you saved my child's life. And that mm. that really blesses me. So it's a real blessing to hear that about your brother's five-year-old son. Wow. Yes. And it was amazing because I I felt just, I, I had so much sympathy for my nephew because I remember yeah. being, growing up and I was like, oh no, he has what I have, you know, like. He's definitely related to me. <laughs> oh, so, yeah. It's so scared for him to have to grow up with all those issues. Um, but yeah, the, the bread just absolutely within days solved all his problems. And um, so my brother called my mom and he told her to listen to your podcast. He was like, you have to listen to this podcast. Now, my mom is amazing and she has been gluten free with me since I was 19. Um, she says it's because she has some arthritis issues and it helps her arthritis not to eat gluten. But I, I think she's just an amazing mom and just wanted to <laughs> walk through it with me because she saw how hard it was. Yeah. Uh, so she found a class. She started listening to your podcast and then she found a class that you were having at your studio with baking with chocolate. Oh, yes. The everything <laughs> chocolate class. Yeah. yeah. Yes. And she called me and it was my birthday. It was actually on my birthday that you had that class. And she called me and said, I want to take you to this cooking class for your birthday. in is it's Woodstock, right? Yeah. Yes. Okay. So sadly, though, like, like you said, my husband's in vet school. We had like an event to be at, so I couldn't go. Um, but I told her she should go ahead and I'll start and I would start listening to your podcast. So she and my dad went and she was immediately hooked. She met you um, and she got to talk to you, I think, a little bit. Uh -huh. but she, oh, my goodness. She was hooked. She ate everything. And I got a very excited phone call the next day. <laughs> <laughs> it was a good class to get excited about, I'm going to tell you. <laughs> uh, yeah, and I love chocolate, so I'm so sad that I missed it. <laughs> I'm going to have to come one day to yes. the chocolate class. Um, but yeah, she called me so excited, and she said it all tasted delicious, and she told me about everything you made, and the best part was that she felt great. Um, she felt amazing. And so she went ahead and she went all in, ordered her bread maker. She ordered the grain mill, got wheat, all of it, the whole nine yards. Wow. So, yeah. So at this point, my brother and my mom, totally all in. Um, so I was like, I'm going to listen to this podcast. So I would go to the park every day after school and I would walk just to get some sunshine yeah. and I would listen to your podcast. And part of me was really sad, I'll be honest, when I was listening to it, because I had no hope at all that I could eat this bread. Right. Um, but I was listening and I learned so much about the history of our bread and what they were putting in it and, the, you know, what just what scripture says about bread. And it got me so excited about the concept of it. And so I thought, you know, Maybe my husband and my future kids could eat this bread, and I'll just stick to gluten-free bread. It'll be okay. Yeah. <laughs> but um, a couple weeks later, I came home to visit my parents, and my mom's, all her, you know, bread supplies had come in. And so she baked that first loaf of bread, and I just watched as, like, my parents and my brother, my, I have two older brothers and a younger brother, and so it was my younger brother and my sister-in-law. They were they were eating the bread, and my mom was begging me to come try it, and I just couldn't do it. I just like for for a little while. I stared at it for about thirty minutes. <laughs> I was like, okay. I was like, I can't. I, I'm like you said. I'm in schools, and I had two big projects I had to present the next week. And I know that if I eat, or I knew in my head, I thought if I eat this. Bread, <laughs> I'll be sick all day and all weekend and I'll have to, you know, take naps and I won't have time to prepare for my presentations. Um, but something in me was just like, just try it. Just eat a couple of bites. And I know it was the Lord now, but yeah, yeah so I did. I, I ate a few bites and, <laughs> and I'm sure you laughed when you saw this part in my email, <laughs> but I immediately started crying. <laughs> oh. No. 
started crying. And that sounds so dramatic, but I had not tasted real bread in almost a decade. And I was just so shocked at how amazing the flavor and the texture was. I don't think I've tasted bread that good ever in my life. And yeah. have not eaten it for so long. I mean, or, you know, wheat bread, gluten-free is definitely different. So Yeah, you're just basically eating potatoes and rice formed into the shape of bread. <laughs> yes, that's, that's a great way of putting it. <laughs> So I was just so like, oh, oh my goodness, I was so happy. And I think we all prayed that night that the Lord would either heal me or that I didn't have celiac after all. Yeah. And so the next day I woke up and I was just kind of waiting for it to hit me, you know. I was just waiting for the brain fog to come back and my stomach to hurt. But I woke up and I felt great. Like I felt really, really great. Gosh, that's so amazing. <laughs> and my stomach felt so great. And I like went all day long without having to like lay down. I didn't feel the need to take a nap. I didn't feel brain fog. I felt so good and I was shocked. And so I ate a whole piece of bread that day. That was on Saturday. So I ate a whole piece of bread that day. And then Sunday woke up felt amazing. When we got back from church, me and my mom, like I felt so good that we decided to bake donuts. <laughs> oh, wow. Did she make the donuts that I made in the class with the chocolate? Yeah, ice? yeah we like fried them and had yeah. like, the chocolate sauce and everything. Um, that's how good I felt. I was wanting to eat the donuts. I wanted all of it. Oh. They were so good too. Oh my goodness. Um, so yeah, I was like, you know what? As long as I feel good, I'm going to keep eating it. And my mom baked me two big loaves of bread and sent them to school with me. And I went home with two big loaves of bread. And I have eaten, I have eaten this bread every day since then. Wow. Okay, I'm going to share your TMI part. <laughs> you said you went to the bathroom better than you ever have in your whole life. Yeah. Yes, I did. <laughs> I did. <laughs> It was great. <laughs> oh, gosh, that is so good. So you've been eating the bread now every day since when? It was like the end of February. And I feel good. I've just I've just had so many positive benefits from it. You know? Yeah, you you mentioned share some of those. Um. Okay, so first of all, my energy levels I feel so good in the afternoons, especially. I don't get these afternoon slumps anymore where I feel like I need some coffee. And I don't even drink coffee. I hate coffee. <laughs> but I just, you know, the afternoon and you're just like, oh, just like sluggish. But I don't feel that. I feel so good in the afternoons, especially. And um, I know my skin looks healthier. I sleep so well. And I go to the bathroom every day. I feel fuller for longer. Um, I actually lost five pounds in the first week of eating this bread because it was so easy to not eat a bunch of junk food. Like I didn't crave food, I guess is what I'm saying. Yeah. I would eat the bread and feel satisfied and I could just go about my day and not feel like I needed, you know, snacks and stuff to supplement. Right. I think that's such a good point too. You know, there's so many buzzwords these days and sometimes I think people think gluten-free means healthy and it doesn't you put it oh, exactly. no. <laughs> it's potato starch and white rice yes and so no fiber there filling you up and then they, of course they have to add lots of sweetener and salt and stuff to make it taste halfway decent so mm -hmm. that's it's not filling you up it's not satisfying you and it really in my opinion is in the realm of processed junk food you know right and I get it for people that believe they have to be gluten free, but it's it's not satisfying for sure. Right. And they've come a long way. When I was first yeah. diagnosed or misdiagnosed, I'm not sure how to say it, but they didn't have as many options as they do now. I mean they had a lot, but it it really has come a long way, but it's not the same. It's not nutritious and uh filling. It really is potatoes and rice, kinda in the shape of bread. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Now you mentioned that you've always liked to cook. So this was yes. not a transition, right? No, this was this has just added so much to my experience cooking. Um I've always kind of cooked my meals from home because of being gluten free. It was just so much easier. But now it's even it's just fun. I yeah. I have so much fun cooking. I mean, we can have sandwiches. I've made Texas toast, pancakes, pizza, pasta, and I actually last night made homemade tortillas. Yum. They were not, so good. 
good. <laughs> they are. They are. They're just so delicious. Yes. Um, oh, I was going to say one of my favorite benefits, though, from eating this bread is that I can eat dairy now. Oh, my goodness. Yes. I, I, haven't, eat, I haven't been able to eat dairy, you know, for eight years. And so when I started eating this bread and my stomach got better, I was like, I'm going to try yeah. To see if I can have some cheese. So I kind of introduced cheese and I was fine. And then yogurt and milk. And now I don't have to buy two different kinds of milk and butter and cheese and ice cream and yogurt. Like I can just buy one now for me and my husband instead of buying, you know, the, the dairy free version and the regular version. It's saving me a lot of money and it tastes so much better. <laughs> Yes. And I don't think people and, and I don't even fully understand the connection of gut health with the, you know, with the different allergies. But that is amazing. Yeah. That it's healed you in that way. Um, golly, this is so exciting. So you <laughs> already bought your own grain mill, right? And bread maker. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, I did. I bought my own grain mill and my bread maker. And like I said, my brother doesn't live too far away from you guys. So he'll drive to y'all's, the bread maker store every few months and kind of pick up the wheat. And then we kind of disperse it between our family because now my entire family, I have a very big family and we are all eating this bread, all three of my brothers and their families and me and my husband. And I've talked about it to all my friends. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of those things where you can't you can't stop talking about it. It's just too good. And so I've told my classmates, you know, I've been in school for four years with them. They know I don't cheat on gluten. And so they're amazed. Like I'll bring, I've brought pizza to them to try and like bread. And that some of them have even bought like grain mills and bread makers. And they're just, they're going at it now. They're, they're making their own bread <laughs> and so listening to podcasts. So it's been fun. Oh my goodness. You just, you just inspire me just listening to you. <laughs> oh it's my been so gr great to, to hear your story because I believe it will be an encouragement to so many people. Um, you know, I don't think we're, mm, I don't know how to say this, but I don't think we're fully understanding that wheat is not the bread that's offered in the store. That is a totally altered product that is, it is making people sick. It's what I've been teaching for 32 years now, but they, it's just hard to make that connection. And when I hear people say, oh, the wheat is inflammatory or the wheat is this or whatever, I'm like, it's not the wheat. <laughs> it's mm -hmm. what they've done to it. So I'm just so happy that, that you've um, shared your story. You, you, your family is, uh, has seen so much improved health. I, I do want to reiterate to our listeners that you had all the classic symptoms of celiac disease. You really did as a young child. Mm -hmm. Um, so you never actually had a blood test diagnosis. Is that right? No, I did not. And I right. will say, yeah, I, we don't know if the Lord healed me or if it was just the, the wheat, the, the bread in our grocery stores. I, right. We don't really know, but I am really thankful. And I hope that people can hear my story. And I, t I told my mom before coming on, I said, you know, no one was really talking about this when I was growing up and my mom didn't know about bread beckers. And so I hope that if you have like a child or a teenager or if you're a young adult and you're going through stuff like this, I, I just hope it helps just for me to talk about it and kind of bring it out in the open, you know, to have some yeah. besides eating gluten free. Yep. And I, I just love, you don't know, you don't know, did I really, really have celiac disease and God supernaturally healed me? Or was it truly the processed bread um, and wheat products that line our grocery store shelves? But either way, what one way or another, God was <laughs> in this story and <laughs> found not only freedom, great freedom from quite debilitating bowel itch issues and health issues, but you found freedom in the food you can eat and enjoy. And to me, that is so exciting. So yeah, <laughs> close today. And, and I just, I just want to thank you so much, but I always want to give my guests one final opportunity to speak a word of encouragement to the listeners. And Sarah, your story is like a gift. It really is to all who hear it. And I believe with everything in me that it is going to encourage 
those who hear it. But how would you like to wrap up your gift for listeners today? Just share one last final thought or word of encouragement that's on your heart. I think I would say if you are struggling, um, you know, with your health and you're thinking about trying the bread beckers, absolutely try it um, and don't give up. If you're sick and you feel like, you know, there's no hope or light at the end of the tunnel, there is. And just keep keep praying and keep diving into scripture and leaning on the Lord because there there is hope. And so don't give up and absolutely try this bread. <laughs> and if you are celiac, I feel for you and it's going to be okay either way. Um, there's lots of good options for people who have celiac disease. Um, but if you don't, I would absolutely um, try this bread any way you can. Give it a chance and, and don't give up hope. Yes, absolutely. What a powerful message. And, you know, the Lord promises us that if we lack wisdom, um, we can ask him and he'll mm-hmm. give it to us. And I love it. It says without fault finding. He's 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 not partial in who he's going to or biased on yeah. who to pour out wisdom to. And um, I tell you, just this week, reading in Second Kings chapter 20, when Hezekiah was told by the prophet that he was going to die, he had some type of infirmity, and he cried to the Lord, and the prophet had already left. The Lord told him to go back and tell Hezekiah these words, and he says, I have heard your prayers, and I have seen your tears, and behold, I am healing you. And I just hearing your story, I'm sure you were praying and I'm sure you shed many tears as well as your mom, probably. And uh, it is such a blessing to me every time I hear someone say, I was praying and asking God for answers Mm -hmm. and I came across real bread. So Sarah, just thank you so much for sharing today. And again, I want to encourage each and every listener to seek God's wisdom for your life. And I know that you will find the answers you've been praying for. So thank you for listening today. Until next time, this is Sue Becker from Bread Beckers with Sue's Healthy Minutes. Sue's Healthy Minutes podcast has been a presentation by the Bread Beckers Incorporated located in Woodstock, Georgia. For more information, store hours, and learning opportunities, visit breadbeckers.com and follow us on Facebook and Instagram. Make sure to subscribe to this podcast and never miss an episode. Share this with two friends who would benefit from this information and be sure to join us again next week for more of Sue's Healthy Minutes.